goes. <sighs> How we doing? Cute, bitch. We, uh, are we ready to get this shindig? We sure as hell know Kennedy is. Yes! Yes, honey, she ready. <laughs> Let's bring these beautiful people out. Let's go ahead and bring on Miss Cornbread! Yes. And please keep that going from Malaysia, baby doll, baby doll, baby, baby doll, doll fuck! Ow! Welcome. Yeah. So the first thing I want to remind you guys is that we are serving food and cocktails. So feel free to wave a server down. They'll come down and get you some good stuff. And of course, Roscoe's. Roscoe's, if you have not, uh, I'm not Roscoe's, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> If you have not pushed that subscribe button, please go ahead and do so right now. How are you lovely ladies doing? We'll start with you, Kennedy. How are you? I'm doing good. I came in the day early. That's the best thing to do, <laughs> is to come in the day early so you can relax. Oh, so I feel good. Yeah, good. Yes. Well, you look I'll, good. Yeah, rested, ready to drink, talk shit. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Cornbread? How are you? I came in a day late. <laughs> I'm not ready to drink it. No, I'm kidding. I'm always ready to drink. Hey, baddie. Um, no, but I'm doing good. How are you? You look good in your pink. Of course. Thank you. You look oh. absolutely stunning. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Malaysia, how are you, beauty? Out of breath. Yeah. <laughs> she better work. But here, I'm ready and excited. How is, this, is this our first time in Chicago, Malaysia? Yes, it is, and it's cold as hell. Yeah. Oh. Did you bring a coat? I mean, the one I have on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been enjoying you uh, thus far on this season. Um, you have had some <laughs> great, great, great uh, confessionals. Those are my favorites, uh, the confessionals. Have you been having a good time watching it? Yes, I have. <laughs> I mean, I've been authentically myself, so, you know, of course I enjoy that. <laughs> Can't say the, you know, that for everybody else. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, we, this is getting started. started. And I live. And we just I love started. it, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it's the this, truth. Well, we are going to get into that because I think that this this season has been a little bit kumbaya, and you you kind of started the drama for us a little bit in the uh, in the untucked when. This season, Kumbaya. I feel like I, I feel like everyone's yeah. kind. Yeah, it everyone's was chill kind of been These friendly. is the messiest motherfuckers I've ever seen in my life. Right. Not you to like think episode so? four. Season fourteen was Kumbaya. Well, I mean, I had a moment. But like these <laughs> motherfuckers, crazy as hell. No, we're saying they didn't really fight until they had to fight over the parts. That was the first time we got a little. A little um, energy from anyone. Oh, I guess because they talk shit and confess. Was or or when Marsha Marsha got to had to be put in her place. Real Very quick. that too. <laughs> With that, we're, we're definitely gonna get into that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, do we have any announcements that we need to make? I don't think so. Just make sure you guys are drinking. I see some of you guys have House of Love cocktails. Hello, yeah. hello. And um, we have servers for those of you that are sitting down that want to eat and drink. So. All that jazz. In addition, stick around at 10.30. We will have performances from all of us up here on the stage. And if you don't have any plans tomorrow morning, come check out Malaysia, Cornbread, and Kennedy at our XYZ brunch hosted by Coronation. Yes, yes, yes. That's going to be a lovely time. And that's a special treat because that, that doesn't happen very often where you get to see them today for the show um, and the viewing party. And they come to brunch. So you guys are really getting a treat. Um, so make sure you guys come uh, to brunch, have a snack, and watch these lovely grade-A entertainers. This is going to be such a good brunch. I'm so excited. All right. With that said, have you been enjoying the season, Kennedy? I have. You know, I had to binge watch because I, I'm barely home. But um, I, I am really enjoying it. I mean, they're keeping the legacy alive or whatever. And, you know... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it just seemed like it get worse every season. <laughs> Why do you think it gets worse? You think, what, what, what do you, you think like, it is? You'd be like, damn, they picked that one? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know, I say it with love. I still respect everybody and their drag and how they choose to do it. But it's just like, you know. Some things, some choices that pr the producers make just brings down our property value. Okay, is it? Are you saying it's with the contestants or with what they're doing on the challenges? Yes. Um, the contestants. Oh. Oh. 
That's why y'all wanted me here, right? Absolutely. Mother- listen, okay. listen, Kennedy. I- Look, they can't call me bitter now. They know me. <laughs> they know I just talk shit. Okay. And Kennedy, I wasn't here last time, and everyone told me how much fun they had with you. It was last everything. Time. So I have been looking forward to this. Blame Batty, and I'm glad I'm not sitting next to that <laughs> that bitch tonight, bitch, because we she was shooting them shots over there. Oh, bitch, I'm gonna shoot a couple of, um, at you too. What are you I'm like? Ready. <laughs> <laughs> she said she was drinking tequila with four squeezed limes in it. Yeah, four. And chilled. Is Casamigos, that right? Casamigos, yes. Yeah, Casamigos. If we can get yeah. one of those for her. Yes, um, yeah. that but I am great. enjoying the season. I really am. I, I like. I really mean it when I say they're keeping the legacy of uh, RuPaul's Drag Race alive. It looks like something that That's always a good thing. So. All right, we're to getting this started. This Let's go. Challenge. All right, work. Okay, so first things first. Uh, Malaysia. We're gonna get into the energy right after the elimination. You go back into the workroom, everyone's sitting down. Lucy's being Lucy. Um, <laughs> I uh, see we have a milk every yeah. season, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but that they, is so rude. Her name's <laughs> Diabetti. <laughs> <laughs> but they just sent your daughter Spice home. How are you feeling in the moment, Malaysia? Honestly, that was the first elimination when we it started to feel real. Like it was like, oh, like it's a little bit of bitches in now. Like you can start to feel the energy was very different. And Spice has like such an energy because she's so like quirky, funny, and like very random. So it's like very different when she left. Kind of quiet. Yeah. <laughs> I love that Malaysia said. Well, after half the people were gone, then it felt real. <laughs> It's true. I love that. But okay, so uh, tell us the the energy. You know, Lucy was being very Lucy. Uh, what we just witnessed on camera was it very that, or was there even more so of it? Honestly, I don't even remember it being like that. I think like you mean you give them the material and they use what they got. You know, I, the edit, son. <laughs> um, I, I want to say blame it on edit, <laughs> but I mean she gave them what they wanted, and I mean they used it. <laughs> and, um. To me, I wasn't really close to Lucy there like that. So, you know, when you don't talk to somebody like that, you really don't pay them no attention. So, I never really paid Lucy any attention, honestly. Uh, no, and it's not being shady until we had to work in a group together. And then the last Untucked, too, when I told her that I wasn't sure what her look was. Like, that was the only interactions that we had. So, we got to witness. <laughs> we- it's true. You were so you were like, I'm not sure what the look is, girl. <laughs> you just were not featuring I mean, it. N- no, it wasn't that. I I thought it was like condoms or something. So, but what we didn't see in a tuck was that I was saying that I didn't know what it was, and because they, you know, who do you think is on the top? Who do you think is on the bottom? I was like, well, Lucy, I don't know what the look was. So when she came back, and I was like, yeah, we were worried that they wouldn't know what the look was, and she was like, they knew what the look was, and I was like, well, we were saying we thought that they didn't, they wouldn't think. And then she was trying to correct me. And I'm like, well, bitch, it's ugly. <laughs> and she, well, she said, and your dress is ugly. And I said, and I'm safe, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but I love Lucy. And then she like, re- mistress was being a mess. They didn't show it. Mistress was like, what's going on? But Lucy had reached over, grabbed my hand, and said, I'm sorry, girl. And I said, it's okay. They ain't want no smoke out the Marsha. <laughs> yeah, you, you wrapped Marsha up. Uh, you did not want to be disrespected, which is fully, you know, I guess nobody wants to feel that way. What was the energy like at that moment in the room? How long did, did the silence go on for? The silence was a very long time. The, no, 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 it really was. After I said what I said, she kind of sunk back in the chair and teared up, and it was completely quiet. And also, somebody else in the room doubled down on what I said. Who? That they, they didn't put it in there. I think Mistress said it the last time she was here. Aww. And um, yeah, so I guess they just wanted it to be kind of be between me and her and didn't want it to look as intense as it was. Um, but yeah, I said what I said. And after a few minutes, somebody else said what they said. And then I cleared the air. And I said, listen, I don't have a problem with you. I just don't like to be disrespected. And I said this and they edited it out. And I said, that's for the rest of you hoes in this room. Don't ever try me. Cause I'm, don't fucking play with me, period. Okay. And that's what I said. They knew, they knew. Child All right. Season 15's Miss Congeniality. <laughs> Girl, they love editing. We're all in our congenial era. Yeah. <laughs> 
And we're back. So I we have a have. really unique challenge here. They're combining improv with a little bit of interview, um, which is very interesting. They've done this a few times throughout the franchise. Um, what would you say you'd prefer to do, be the host or be the interviewee, ladies? I would like to uh, be the in the host. The host, host. Of it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cause I know how to go back and forth with a hoe, and I can cut you off and be like, "Oh my God, you doing X, Y, Z? Show me how you did that." You know, like the whole how you talk to squirrels thing. She had an opportunity to stop her and say, "Oh, how would you say to a squirrel girl, fuck you?'" Then she would have made the squirrel noise or That's get those nuts interrupt. away from my face. That yeah, been, yeah. So much you could have did with that. So if you're the host, you you know. When you host a trade, you got control, and you can just roll over and go to sleep. So I feel like you can do the same thing on the show. You know, you can host and then roll over and do whatever you need to do. It works out perfectly. All right, Kennedy, what would you prefer to do, Diva? Um, probably host as well because you can have, like, your guidelines on where you want to go as far as question, but you never know how they're going to respond, so you have to be ready to improv. So, and we all know I know how to do that. So are you saying <laughs> Selena wasn't ready to improv? Hell no, nah, she wasn't. <laughs> and it's clear. <laughs> how, do we, how do we feel about this this challenge? We just like who do you think excelled within these three, and who do you think is in the bottom? Uh, and uh, out of those three, uh, out of those three, well, the one that don't have no drag, she did really, really good. Who is who it? Who ain't got no drag? <laughs> <laughs> who is hey, it? No. London? <laughs> is it London? <laughs> London. Oh, Marsha yeah, huh. didn't go yet, you guys. She's talking about London. Oh, I love that everyone Lux. said Marsha. She hasn't gone yet. So oh, yeah, you think she London did really, did really well? well? I think she has a beautiful <laughs> personality, and she, she knows how to you know, do the competition. She just don't have no clothes. It did seem like Lux had a better control with the conversation and guiding it with Connie. Um, who do you think struggled more between Mistress and Selena? Mistress. Mistress definitely struggled. It's, I mean, you know, it's clear. She said it. <sighs> Malaysia, your perspective, who struggled the most? Um, I just want to watch and see. <laughs> we just did. <laughs> I mean, it's more to come. <laughs> I do think London actually did a really good Lux. job in this one. I thought she did really, really good. That girl named Looks. Yeah. <laughs> They done changed the baby name to London by 15 times. Who was London? <laughs> Nisha? I, see, that'd be the problem. I, who the fuck is Heather? Nobody's memorable. Oh. D do you think that about these 15 girls? They're just not memorable to 16? you? 16? Not all 16. of them. No, it's season 15, bitch. Calm down. <laughs> now, is it hard because there's so many, or they just aren't standing out enough for you, Kennedy? I mean, you have some beautiful personalities like my niece, Malaysia, and Mistress, and you know, some, a few more people. That's Two. it. That's you. Miss Sasha. Beautiful Three. gowns. You know, beautiful gowns, beautiful gowns. Very that. Very that, Malaysia. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. They are making good TV. Yeah. I, they gonna, I'll, I'll get it. I'll see it on social media. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take it back, sorry. Kennedy, do you think that this is, like, I understand how you feel. Do you think it's just because they're, they casted, like, younger queens that don't necessarily know all of the aspects of the business being, like, full, well-rounded? Oh, you just dragged them. Yeah. No, I didn't. Yes, no. no but no, you, we talked you, about it. Oh, we gonna come back to that, bitch. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Girl, you supposed to text a uh, mistress right now. <laughs> First and foremost, that wasn't my synthetic bob. That was Lux Synthetic Bob. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. And she knew that from, from the, the Afterlife Challenge when Lux was the person doing the, um, the interview and she was bobbing the bob. That was Lux's bob. Okay. Was it once 40 inches? <laughs> you know what? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, so <laughs> tell us about um, the interview. Did I mean, obviously we, we saw what we saw right now, but was there more to that interview? Um, of and course how did you feel? And how did you feel about it? <laughs> Um, I felt like I did a very good job on the interview, yeah. But what I seen was not a good job, but okay. <laughs> no, totally, totally. On the, you know, I'm one of the first ones that talks about uh, a, a certain narrative or production. And do you feel that that was just the case here? Of course, you know. I, I had a lot more dialogue, let's just say that. <laughs> well, no worries, Marsha was just as bad. What? I'm just saying. 
Well, let me or no, am I not supposed to say that? No. The bitch was bad. Shit. You are absolutely right. <laughs> um, no, and let's... she was worse than you. <laughs> Let's look at the she challenge over, let's, and I want to ask all of you this. Uh, let's look at the challenge overall. What do we feel about this challenge? Do you think it was, it was a good challenge? I think it had like potential to be, to be good. I actually would have enjoyed this kind of moment. Um, it's all about how you do it and how you control it. Because it's all the same shit. It's just showing personality and doing things a particular way. You know, obviously, you know, TV is TV. But like, I just think any challenge is practically the same challenge. Just ha ha ha, make us laugh kind of moment. So I liked it. Um, I didn't like all the interviews, but I liked it. Yeah. Um, I really think, especially being on Drag Race, you can't take everything so serious. So um, you have to take every moment. It's just it's like hosting. Like when, when you're hosting a regular show in a club or anything, you have to take every moment and make it funny and make it entertaining. It's not like you're going to get a whooping if you do a bad job. You know, so once you take the challenge and take on the challenge, then you make yourself laugh before you feel embarrassed, if, if that makes sense. Yes. So I'm not gonna be embarrassed, I'm just gonna make fun of what's going on here. And we are only seeing the production's um, point of view, and we only got to hear what Selena had to say, who is friends with Frankie, and Mistress, who reads everybody. But Malaysia, in that moment, did you have a good time, and did Frankie seem like he enjoyed it as well? Oh, I had a very, very, very good time. This was actually one of the challenges I felt very confident in, but we know at Drag Race, when you feel confident in something, that's really like, bitch, I'm gonna get you. They pulled the rug out, yeah. <laughs> we'll be ready for you to go home, honey. But, um, I mean, I, I had a good time, and it was fun, and yeah. It was what it was. It was a lot more banter and a lot more going on, but I mean, hey, spicy meatballs it is. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a shirt, bitch. Did we find it interesting that the interviews were inside and outside? Like, I feel like the girls on the, on the go-kart, golf cart, like, they had a little more way of having fun because they were doing something that was fun as opposed to, okay, you're in the kitchen, you're going to make a pizza this is what you have to do. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to this. <laughs> All right. Okay, so sure. let's talk about the runways, girls. Let's talk about, do we have any standouts? Mistress, and well, then uh, this one right here, because you look the fuck good, bitch, no shame. Yes, ma'am. She, she was my favorite. My finally favorite. not a gown, right? <laughs> 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 finally not the same silhouette. <laughs> I'm jealous. I would have loved to have done that. That looks so fun. It was the most recent Beyonce, too, so fresh on everyone's mind. Good job there, dude. Yeah, that was good. We really good. Yeah, yeah. So who do we think had the... Oh, we didn't get Kennedy's favorite. Yeah. Oh, who was your favorite, Kennedy? Sure. Malaysia. Malaysia. Okay. And who were our least favorites on the runway? Lux. Y'all saying Marsha. All right. <laughs> I heard At it. least you know the girl's name. I heard name. it three times. Marsha. Ooh, Marsha look like a bag of carpets. Ooh! <laughs> a bag of carpets. Yeah, it sounded like they put them in the trash bag, <laughs> and you pull them out like, bitch, ooh, bitch, I got some carpets. You want to buy one? Carpet. <laughs> what the fuck? Kennedy said she looked like sample sale bag of carpets. <laughs> you are shady as fuck. Edit Back me out the video, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, they gonna hear this one, honey. I'm about to be, oh, girl, you know I didn't mean it, girl. I, <laughs> I think Marsha, she looked the part, but it was just, there was a certain essence or something that was just not, she wasn't did Beyonce, she was giving say, Taylor Swift. Did you just say, she, Ariana Grande go. is what she gave. She was, no, she was giving, I'm fine, I'm fine. I can walk all the way to, oh. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> sees Steel Magnolias. Right no, these kids oh. are too young, honey. Oh, Steel Magnolias, go look it up. <laughs> bitch, she look like she belong in the salon, bitch. <laughs> Let me fix okay, your hair, so. roll a set. So. <laughs> um, do y'all think Lucy should have had the baby bump if she was gonna do that look from that the was, yeah. That was like the number one thing, I think, that was what made that costume. Yeah. Was, would have been the baby bump been because that was camp. what made it the most memorable. That's the, why my first could. Beyonce choice, I was going to be a pregnant Beyonce too, but mm. I changed my mind. Um, but she look still at gave me minute. news reporter fish. <laughs> no. It actually news was, reporter fish. I think they emailed her the wrong thing. She got Night of a Thousand Bob the Drag Queens and she did Bob's final look. <laughs> That's what Remember it Bob was. did the leggings and the yeah, jacket? Yeah, I remember that. No, but somebody should have did Beyonce getting her hair caught in the fan or Beyonce in the elevator. Get out of Woods. Okay, she's, come on, the black eye. Yeah. 
Okay. Wow, Betty. Um, <laughs> I think um, I think Mistress was very clever. It was clever. It was very yeah, yes. it was. clever and funny. I mean, I, I mean, Campy. I really liked that. Campy, yeah. yep. If she would have had all five members, that would have been T. But we could do the three. That was that was a moment there. Girl, how the fuck she was gonna she do that? Malaysia, <laughs> Malaysia. I knew you were going. <laughs> Otherwise, if if uh, what's her name? Um, if um. Mayor was that uh, I don't know, forgot the child name. Y'all gave me too much tequila. Um, but um, if Ma Marsha Lux, no girl child, not Marsha Lux. She Sasha. she ain't on the show no more. Anitra love. Lucy, she, she gone. Aura, or Mayor, yeah. boom cat. There y'all please let this woman win so we don't hear her mouth no more. Who? Lucy, Lucy girl. You know she's not gonna she's win. She's not gonna she win with that. Baby, I'm sorry. That's she gave her. prom king. Do you that think that's no, yeah, runway gave trash? Wait, but she, I, I honestly think. Wait, do you guys think <laughs> she actually for me she won the the the, challenge. the, the, the interview challenge. Yes. the challenge she the won challenge, best she out of won everybody it. definitely. definitely. Yeah. I really like Lux interview though. Like I genuinely hers was good Lux too. Interview. Yeah, but some of the fashions on the runway have been a little lackluster. Kind of, yeah. And so, like, like, Lucy has been really well in some of the challenges, and then the runway hasn't been up to par. No, yeah, yeah. and that's why she ain't winning. Welcome, Queen. Okay, really, I've, I've talked to a lot of the girls that have been on the show, and Cornbread and Kennedy, I, I, you've never told me this, but I want to know your, what you guys, your take on this as well. Um, there's times you get critiques, right? And you've said, okay, thank you, blah, 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 etc. But then you go back home and you watch it, and I know you're like, I wish I would have said A, B, C, D, and F. Malaysia, at that moment right now with what we saw, were you happy with your response to their critiques? And if you can change or say anything to them, what would you say? Can I wait to answer this question? Yeah, yeah you want to wait for that Yes, one? please. Okay, yeah. yeah. Then let's wait. Okay, how about Cornbread and Kennedy? You well, ever experienced that? Well, for me, I mean, the episodes that I was on, because I was on like three and a half episodes, they were like 99% about me, so I got to say everything that I kind of felt. <laughs> um, no, it's true. Um, like, if you, if you watch season 14 again, you will see that it was made about me, because I think it was obviously, you know, I was going to go home because of my whole ankle in injury, so they put as much of me as they could. But, like, I always said what I felt, and I always had a rebuttal if I didn't agree. And I think that's where most people have to understand. Although there's a lot of pressure when you're there. So it's like your mind is like, okay, they're saying this to me, maybe they're correct. But I've been in like theater and performance for so long and I know when I don't agree with what you're saying and I get it, you're a judge or whatever, but also there's a matter of respecting myself. So if I don't agree with it, I'm gonna say it because I know what I did and what I didn't do. So I'm very much one of those people, but you're gonna hear it. And it's I'm always out of respect, but I'm gonna say, no girl, I don't think I agree with that. I actually thought I did really good and I can tell I did really good in it. Like the acting challenge where everybody said, oh, Cornbread, we knew you were in the top. Then I watched the acting challenge. I said, God damn, bitch, they picked the worst shit. So I do personally feel when you're there, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. So your mind is not thinking directly then at that moment, what do I say? You just say, okay, let me just get the shit out of the way so I can go. So yeah, I said it all. How about you, Kevin? Everything. Uh, <clears throat> I, I'm kind of like uh, where cornbread is at. I think I said everything. I know I said everything you I sure needed to did. say. <laughs> um, and it, it was just, and season seven was really hard because you know, even though we had pageant girls before, they, was, they, they still wasn't open to pageant girl drag, like big earrings and big hair and things like that. So people like Carson, and you know, they had really big opinions about, oh, your earrings too big, blah, blah. now they love it all now. You know what I'm saying? So it was more of trying to educate them uh, during <laughs> season seven and, and, and defending, you know, my drag is valid, so fuck my drag, right? Uh, <laughs> I had to throw that in there because people still say, I don't talk about people and they, you know, I respect you even though I'm, a, you know, say how I feel about it. I'm going to still respect your drag because drag is everywhere and drag is all different kinds of things. But they still don't, you know, some still don't see, you know, the kind of drag that I do valid. But I'm the one with the talent. You know, I'm the Period. one that they call to work. And I'm not boasting my own horn, but, you know, let it be equal all the way around. You know, respect all of the drag are the same. And a lot of those people that they put on their panel, they, they the one who need the education. <laughs> Roscoe's, please give it up one more time for Malaysia Baby Tall, Baby Tall, Baby Tall Fox. Yes, 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 yes. 
Malaysia, did you want to go? Did you want to answer that question, or did you want to just tell us? Well, you, uh, answer the, ask the question again. Okay, so uh, when you're put on uh, for critiques and you're on the main stage and they give you critiques and you're there to receive them, after the fact, you it's might think of something that you know you wish you would have said or expressed. Was there something at this? Uh, runway today that you were like, fuck, I wish I would have told them, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Honestly, no, because I felt that from the beginning of the day, okay. I knew it was my day. Yeah. Um, if you've ever been to Drag Race and you've been eliminated in those circumstances, you know. I can relate, yeah, I can I relate to that. That's why I'm That's mad. all I would say. And I knew it was... I can't. The thing, my, my mentality, and I don't know if... It, I think you read pretty well was that I was gonna stay positive and happy for the day because they wanted me to be defeated. Um, they didn't even put, they wanted me, of course, like, you know when it's your day and you're in the workroom, they want you to talk about some traumatic shit. And I was like this, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Cause I felt that. I had a headache that morning and I was laying on the table and they said, hey, you know, pull me to the side, of course. <laughs> and said, hey, um, whatever you're feeling today, you know, just go in there and feel it. And I said, oh, okay. I turned around to the girls and I said, today's the day. <laughs> and they were all like, no, no. And I, um, I went in the workroom and like, that was the best day of my life. I honestly could say like, it was the best day of my life. I, I was like, if this is gonna be my last day, bitch, I'm gonna be painted, bitch, I'm gonna have fun. And like, bitch, I'm not gonna be defeated. And honestly, that was my only regret is that I would have rather went out defeated, but I didn't, you know? <laughs> I would have, I wanted to go out feeling like I lost. Yes. I didn't feel like I lost. So yeah. And I mean, and, and just to, you, you, one, you got on the show, you spent a good amount of time on the show, we fell in love with you, you absolutely did not lose. You know what I Thank mean? Thank you. Um, we're so happy that we got to see you and that you shared your talents with us. Yeah, Cornbread? Yes, um, I would like to um, have a conversation with y'all. We might be real human beings about it. Um, I'm going to say something that is very taboo because the internet falls into a, a world of, of oh, we got to put this person on the pedestal because I, they're on the pedestal. Let me uh, let me stop you for one second, mm -hmm. really quick. So right now, we about right in. now, what we're gonna do is we we're gonna chat a little bit about the episode. Mm -hmm. We'll get into it, and then we're gonna do Q and A. Uh, just want to remind everyone that there's a whole other side of the bar that you can talk, you can chit chat, you can drink, you can do all that good stuff. But on this side, we're going to respect their time and what they're saying. So we're not gonna be chit chatting while they're chit chatting. Okay, so. Other side of the bar, me. have a kiki, or listen quietly on this side. We good? Yes? Awesome. Party. Okay, go ahead, Cornbread. So I'm going to say what most of y'all don't want to say because y'all are afraid to say most of the time. Um, I'm not a judge, and I don't critique or anything like that, but I want to tell you how I thought the episode should have went, in my opinion. What I saw, I thought Lux actually won that challenge, especially from the critiques that they gave her, as well as her interview. I did not see Sasha winning that challenge, and I know everybody, oh my God, it's Sasha, and Sasha's one of my really good friends. Selena's one of my really good friends. We're all LA sisters, but I'm going to say something that's taboo to a lot of people because, you know, Roy is in. Sasha knows that she's fucking phenomenal, but I thought Lux should have won that challenge, and I thought... You won that lip sync, and I am friends with both Sasha and I'm friends with Selena S. Titties, and I'm gonna speak my truth on it, and y'all should too. I genuinely feel like Lux won that from the critiques and what we saw, so let's be honest, let's be real. We saw it in that damn golf cart, I get it, I understand it. Sasha, woo, yay, bro, and then also Selena lost that lip sync <laughs> because it was not on beat. But can we uh -uh. say, uh, but can we also say uh, how Marsha should have been in the bottom? <laughs> Absolutely. We fully can say that, but I genuinely forgot Marsha was in the episode. That's it. Ah Which is my point. And it, it validates Rube next week saying there has to be more. It should have been more since uh, the first episode. And yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's zero shade to it. No, I genuinely felt you, you looked phenomenal. She should have been in the bottle. Your mug was dusted. The she lip sync was in great. The and honestly, at, yeah, it definitely should have been... Um, well, mm, no, you know, what, what we were just showing. She should, yeah, she should have been there. Being, I'm sorry, y'all, because don't be I sorry. Give, I give. Be, I'm yeah. not. Um, <laughs> it's hard because you know television now, yeah. and yeah. you can see it before it even happens. Absolutely. And I kind of saved it because I already knew my niece was going home just because how they fucking did it. Yeah. 
And you, it, if, if you're going to edit it and uh, however you want to edit it, just be fair. Right. right. And it's been a, it's been a few times. <coughs> it's been a few times where <laughs> it's just not fair. Like when is RuPaul's Drag Race going to continue to be like start like have a reputation of being fair? Right. And this was an unfair episode in my opinion because some she should have been in the bottom, honey. She should have been in the bottom. Those are some fair Malaysia, points. Le, uh, I want Malaysia. She wants to say something really quick. Now, like I said, like of course, like I didn't feel defeated because, like we know, like it's television. Um. And somebody has to go, and they have like a method to what they want and what they want to do. And um, my method was just staying as long as possible. Um, at some point, I knew that I wasn't a front runner in the competition. Um, I was there, <laughs> and also we all were very gagged at the results um, of the winners and the placements and everything. Um, but of course, they show reactions of the people who they want to be dramatic and everything. But I will say, I love Sasha dearly. Even herself was gagged that she won that challenge. She was, and no yes, tea, no shade. Sasha was very worried she was in the bottom. I would just say that. Okay. Yes. And, and you know what's so funny is if, and you guys watching it, I mean, it, it, it doesn't take a scientist. Or, uh, if you're watching it, what is bothering Lucy the most? Not winning. That not winning. And, and what did they while do? I agree with Cornbread that, Sasha did not win. I thought Lucy was phenomenal, actually. I really thought she was phenomenal at this. And I think they were like, we are going to fuck with this bitch's head. And we are she not going to... Pitch to I thought she was going to walk to the back like <laughs> Nick was and start talking <laughs> shit. I still fucking you, mad. You I also, have, believe this you also shit. have to remember that Lucy and Sasha have a really, really good relationship on the show, so... Well, I'm it, just saying that from my yeah. opinion of like what I saw like watching it and I'm not saying like Sasha did terrible because I'm not saying she did terrible whatsoever yeah. what I'm saying from what I saw I genuinely thought Lux was going to win it and yeah. from y'all's reaction in the audience consistent. y'all reacted to Lux more than y'all did for Sasha is just the thing of we have to get past this moment and there's zero disrespect to anybody obsessed with Sasha she's fucking phenomenal but I feel like the fans now go to a moment of not wanting to speak the truth because they're afraid of what everybody else is going to say going against it. Yeah. Sasha did a great job. It's just the fact that she holds so much weight and everybody's Sasha, Sasha, Sasha that y'all are afraid to speak opinion. But Sasha is a pageant person. She used to opinions and she's used to this stuff. From watching the episode and the critiques that were said, Lux was extremely strong. Rue loved her look. The interview was great, yeah? Lucy ain't had no baby bump, but she was phenomenal in the thing. And I still say she looked like Bob. <laughs> and I genuinely thought... That you did better in the lip sync. This is my opinion based yeah, on that. I think we gotta get past like she that. She was having a seizure, honey. Not. <laughs> and again, you can have these opinions and it not be negative. She's not discrediting uh, Selena or Sasha. She's just saying. Oh no, from, no, what, no, the show, from what they uh, showed us, you got to that's understand the, point. the bread. You ain't even got to give these hoes no extra little oom oom to try to save me. I don't give a fuck. I said what I said, <laughs> and what I said was the truth. And there's no way anybody can twist what I said and said it was negative in any light. They can try to if they want to, but I'm a thug. I fight people on the internet. That's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Every word I said, y'all shaking y'all head and saying, yeah, well, you true, but you don't want to say out loud. I am point blank period in saying I did not discredit anybody, but you ain't got to pad it for me. I don't give a fuck what the child and they heard what I said. And that's cornbread, not Malaysia, okay? That, yeah. Y'all confuse us a lot, okay? And it's cornbread and it's spelled <laughs> M-A-Y, my man. <laughs> No, but yeah, it was no negativity upon it. And if you try to say it was negativity, bitch, meet me in the parking lot. But all I'm saying that should is be used to I that by now. We great. 15 seasons in. Yeah, Y'all know how we do. Yeah, truthfully. <laughs> but it was a great episode. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, Malaysia, now that our time has unfortunately come to an end, was there one standout moment that you remember that you'll always um, keep real close to you from uh, your time on the show? A standout moment? When you scared that little bitch. When I scared, oh my God. Was that a favorite moment? Oh my gosh. I don't know if it was a favorite moment, but um, honestly, like when I sit at home and I watch the show, I watch the show, I don't watch the show as like I'm there. I watch the show as a fan because I've always been a fan of Drag Race prior to being on it. And I tried out fucking six, seven times, bitch. So I'm very proud of myself for getting there. Um, so yeah, I mean, also like when I see myself, I see like 
my flaws and I see stuff that I want to work on on myself. I feel like I had horrible makeup the whole season and that's it was a reason why. But um I'm very proud of what I did like in the competition. Like I said, um I went in super confident because I thought it was one thing and then it was like something totally different from what I expected and I think when it came like when I got like to a certain point I had to really like come out of my shell and then like really start to fully form who I wanted to become in the competition and I think it was a little too late I think if I would have came out a little earlier and been like me um I think it would have worked out better for me but also I was really really sick prior to going to drag race like I my voice was completely gone like when I um, got the call to be on the show the next week my voice was gone so my voice came back when I was in the room and um, when I, like, my voice came back, like, the first day we um, went in the workroom, like, yeah. So even, like, my talent show, like, I had to record it. I auto-tune the hell out of it. It's not what I wanted to do. Um, not making excuses. I'm proud of everything that I did. But, yeah, it is what it is. And I don't feel like I have to go validate myself on the Internet and explain everything, which I haven't done. Um, it is what it is. I know what I'm capable of. I know what I could do. And Drag Race only shows one part of who I am. I mean, now it's the opportunity for everybody to get to see every other part of me. So, you know, that is what it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to touch base real quick because you spoke about being so Im intimidating, um, intimidated by um, Sasha and by being um, on the show with the cameras and whatnot. But you, I don't know if you guys know this, she does Trina's hair. Trina is a hip hop singer, celebrity. What, how, how did you... When did you realize that you are a star? Since I was born. <laughs> um, the crazy part is like, I tell people all the time, I didn't go on a drag race because I wanted to be famous. I wanted to be on drag I race. I did. Because... <laughs> I want to inspire people from where I'm from like, and show them that they could do it. Um, Kennedy is like really from Miami too. Um, and I started doing drag and I like looked up to Kennedy um, in all aspects. And Kennedy was like one of the bitches like reading me to help me get better. Bitch, your makeup look a mess, bitch. Like, you know, and you need to do this and you need to do that. And you know, I took heed and I, I've learned a lot from her. So I wanted to be that person in my community cause this bitch moved away and left. Um, you know, I was good then, but um, I wanted to be that person in my community to open up that door because nobody has like fully represented Miami on Drag Race yet. We have South Florida girls, but a Miami bitch born and raised. Like I want to be that for my girls and Kennedy know the girls I'm talking about. The Melissa's, the Maya's, like the bitches from the hood, okay? <laughs> Fabulous. Let me ask you this. How's, uh, how's your relationship with your castmates? Um, I think I get along with everybody on the cast, honestly. I talk to everybody on the cast, and like, that's not even like a funny. Well, I talk to. It. <laughs> Ooh, oh, you better oh. start. Let me see the phone. Hold on. Let me see the group chat, bitch. I talk to everybody in the group chat. I do, um, and I talk to everybody mostly on the outside. Maybe like, maybe not one person. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. Who do y'all think? I don't know. You want to see the text thread? <laughs> <laughs> I think one thing that people need to take away from this um, and, you know, the patrons and the fans of RuPaul's Drag Race, um, you have to go for the experience and not, and it's mainly for Lucy, but <laughs> it's no read. You have to go for the experience and you can't always, of course we would love to win, but you go to do your best. And that's just like you, when you enter into a pageant, you prepare, you do the categories, and if, if you run without a, without a hitch, then, and you can relate. If you, if, you, if, if you execute it well, then there's a possibility that you can win. And you have to be prepared to win and you have to be prepared to lose you have to be prepared to stay safe and if you are safe then you and then that helps you go to the next week so you have to shake some of that stuff off and just relax and do some tv yes do some tv i was in, i was in pageant mentality i was in pageant mentality and then i realized i was like damn it's tv 
you know. So that's that, that's what too, I was saying though. earlier. It helps too yeah. when you when you're in that mode because you pay attention to detail. You know, you pay attention to things that your other sisters do not. No, and and that's so true. The only thing that, and this is what I what I feel like Malaysia's getting at as well. Um, I, I think you've all felt this is, you get there, you you do the pageant, right? But when you compete at pageant, the score is the score. They're gonna score you. But here, you don't get the score. Here, it's a television show before it's a competition. That's the thing. And because they're making a television show, they're not gonna give you the score that you deserve. Yeah. Because they don't fit the narrative that they're trying. That's to, why you, you have to be saying? prepared. You got to be prepared. You yeah. have to be prepared for however they're going to spin you, however they're going to do. Because it's they they spin the show for y'all, for for y'all to love and for who you know what I'm saying. So it's not about us. It's about the community and who we are entertaining and keeping the show on. So we're just pawns. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we just, we, I, like, I just want, like, when girls get on the show, all I want is everyone to get the love. Do you get what I, Of course, you uh, have your favorites. It's a good time. Yeah. But make sure that there, there's enough love to give to all the girls. We all deserve go, it. Go follow Everybody the girls deserves and because it. They all, because it's a hard thing it, to be on Drag Race. It's really, really hard. That's what I was, even like for, for our season, um, when I um, won Miss Congeniality, people don't understand because everybody's like, well, how did this happen? Every day before we walked in the workroom, even though they told us to shut the fuck up, I'll always say to them hoes, listen, when you walk in there, do a full circle, realize where you are, you got to walk in there and have a party every single day because you never know what's going to go down. So when I walked in there, they was like, Cornbread, you was just crying in the corner. I said, listen, childhood trauma is still here, but bitch, we on drag race. Like, I'm going to use this opportunity to promote myself so when I leave out this bitch, then y'all get to see who I really am. And I think that's what people get... Uh, getting nervous about because it is a lot especially if you're not used to TV but you got to go in there and have a motherfucking party every time you go in there and then when you're done with the show you got to realize there's not one person in this room who can say y'all ain't got somebody y'all don't like that y'all don't talk to y'all friend about when you say I do not like that bitch bitch drag queens are humans too we are the same way so you ain't got to like everybody because there's a lot of motherfuckers I don't like and there's a lot of motherfuckers a lot of y'all don't like as well so hold us to the same regard bitch because y'all know y'all messy in the group chat talking about Sheila even though you ain't right here with Sheila right now having a drink <laughs> where's the lie <laughs> Listen, on that note, um, uh, shout out to our YouTube viewers. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is the portion of the show. We're going to send a couple of shout outs out to our viewers. Let's go ahead and start this out with Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, uh, all the way from Lebanon. He is uh, on, his, on their way to the U.S. to become a doctor. So congratulations. Wow. Uh, Jimmy from Lebanon, and we'll see you soon in the U.S. And I'm single, Jimmy from Lebanon, because you got doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, do you do BBLs? <laughs> we want to hey, say man. happy birthday to Andy in Nicaragua. Hello to pregnant Sierra and their partner Ethan. We want to say hello to Jefferson in Brazil. Sounds like a tourist, but hey, Jefferson <laughs> in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> Hello to Ray in Colorado. Um, shout out to RuPaul in her beautiful gowns. I, who who came really up with that line? <laughs> uh, Roger, all the way from Detroit. Hey, Roger. Lav in Serbia. And hello to Ken in the Philippines. Thank you, everyone, for letting us know that you're watching. And please keep commenting, and we will get to all of your shout-outs throughout our viewing parties. That's so crazy. Sierra Thank pregnant, you. and Lucy wasn't. Right. We are <laughs> pregnant, girl. Uh, also, I want to uh, let everyone know that next week we have Kennedy Davenport's favorite gal, Marsha, 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 will be here <laughs> next week. <laughs> so y'all bringing Kennedy back next week, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, bring Malaysia back next week as well. Oh, girl, you know I'll be like, oh, uh, girl, show. you heard what I said. I <laughs> meant it. <laughs> oh, no, for sure. But I love you, though, girl. <laughs> we also have joining us from the UK, you all know her and love her, Bag of Chips. In addition, we have UK icon joining us. Juno Birch will also be here. Y'all. Yeah. It will be a fierce, fierce, fierce sit -up viewing party and show. And of course, remind you guys that tonight we have Black Girl Magic. We have a 1030 show with all these beautiful entertainers. And so nation. make sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they said Annasia. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> Girl, I am a person of color. I am from okay. Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah, yeah. You black girl. Puerto Ricans are black, y'all. They are. But uh, but yes, make sure you join us at 10:30. We're gonna have a great show. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, one for the record book. So make sure you guys are here at 10:30. Uh, with that said, um, okay, I we, yeah, we're gonna do Q and A, but we still have we still <laughs> she's the question and answer. We had a couple uh, questions before, that yeah, were cut off. I'm sorry. We had a couple questions oh, yeah. that well, were yeah, Kennedy, off. Well, that's what I'm saying. Let's touch on the two questions that we left off on. Um, Kennedy, we had talked about, we mentioned the newer queens in the show opposed to the uh, more seasoned queens. And how did you word that, uh, Batty, when you asked the question? Oh, just about think? experience and knowing like how well-rounded a pageant queen is because when you prepare for a pageant, you prepare for three categories. Um, as opposed to, you know, for the night, and they're preparing for a whole season. What do you think is the difference between that? Like, because no, I don't even think it's about being a pageant queen. I just think it's about the experience of drag and the business of drag. Like, we had, y'all, I mean, this season had TikTok queens that only did drag in their house. <laughs> you know, that's, it's, I'm, I'm try I'm not trying to be funny. I know it's just how but you set it. Versus But that's what they did. It's, just, it's like TikTok Queens versus and it's the, it's stage what they did and what and the, and that's what they said. It was their words, not mine. They were TikTok Queens that did drag in their house versus you know, people who have been in this business for a while. But being on season 7, you know, had it been before season seven, I'd have been like, girl, they don't know nothing about no drag. You know, that was, that, that was my truth then. But every drag is valid. But I do think it puts a drag race in a particular position. You get what I'm saying? And it's like, they trying too hard when they don't have to. Production is trying too hard to reach a demographic that they've already reached, and instead of just letting the show work itself, they're trying to work the show. If I'm making, if that makes sense. Absolutely. What do you ladies think uh, versus uh, uh, TikTok queens versus more seasoned queens? Like, do you think? Wh wh where do you? Where's the stack up? I'm a I'm a big fan of like like a lot of styles of drag. If you actually put in the effort to do those things, and you're like putting 100 percent on behind it, um, because I rather like I I say this to you all the goddamn time. There has not been a person that has touched you performance wise on that goddamn show. We all know that, and so I miss those kinds of moments on RuPaul's Drag Race, and I also do like the moments of having your social media, your TikTok queens. But I think it needs to be a meetup of give half of quote unquote old school styles of drag or where drag derived from and people who are hustling and then have an opposite side of the people from the internet. Like I the agree. energy of uh, Mistress. You could tell Mistress came up with people who are deep into drag and the style of drag that raised up a lot of drag queens. Yes. If y'all did the half and half and you had to have your motherfucking people who are just pageant down or just that old school energy like this motherfucker right here and miss you have a, have six of those and you have six of your TikTok people baby that can be the best episode you ever have in your motherfucking life. that's how it used to be. That's what I'm saying. That's so, how it used to be especially like season six and you know season four um, with Latrice and I mean those were the memorable moments and that's why like in the beginning how I was like being a little condescending on some things it's because the, the the queens from the beginning, t no read. The si the queens from the beginning till about season eight, those are memorable moments. No. Like those are really memorable moments. That's why you know I was always afraid that oh my god, like as they keep progressing, girl, they just gonna forget about a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Because a new queen is coming. But no, thanks to my fans and thanks to working consistently and your talent that go yeah thank you <laughs> it's not that way you know and it's not that fear but also it's like who they casting and i and it's not it's no girl it's who they casting girl and it's like oh girl we'll be all right 
Oh, no, season 16? Oh, we'll be all I, right, girl. I think one of the issues is, too, um, I was watching last week, and I think I said it, is that a lot of the people, like, you come in there with expectations, and especially when you audition, you say how you're going to be, and they kind of typecast you for those roles. But also when you get there, those people who are for those roles get scared to play those parts. Um, some of those girls be scared to speak up. They be scared to speak their mind because they so scared that the fan base is going to attack them, cancel them, and do all this because they're going in there because they want their life to be changed. Uh, they want something from the experience that's, you know, more than what it is. Like, for me, like I said, like, I didn't go to be famous, so I didn't really care, like, who cancels me or who hates me or don't like what I have to say. I'm going to speak my mind regardless, and also, like, I'm going to stand my ground on what I believe in because that's me at the end of the day. I said when I went to Drag Race, um, if I wasn't authentically myself, like, I wouldn't be able to sit back and watch myself on TV knowing that I was being somebody else that I, that I wasn't in reality. And to have my friends text me and say, oh, wow, you was you, like, that makes me feel good because I know that I was 100% me. And a lot of times, like, y'all be like, oh, like, I mean, people going crazy because they, quote, unquote, the little bit of drama that I brought to um, some of the episodes. Like, no, it's just like a lot of people... Um, afraid of being themselves, but also we sit and we watch these people and confessionals like try to get their lick back at you because that's their safe space. And um, they have a lot of opinions about people, but when we're in Untucked or when we're in the room, they want to tell you, don't say that to that person. Uh, oh, no, no, no. But when the um, flashback to the first episodes, when these bitches walking in the room, everybody got an opinion. Oh, she looking best. She ain't got no makeup on. She this, blah, blah, blah. All of that. But when we're sitting in front of these people, you're like, don't say that to her. She's so Her drag is valid. No, bitch. Keep that same energy from behind them closed doors in person. And I've been like, like whatever I got to say, I'm going to say it to you. And like, whether it's in the confessionals or whether it's in the room, I'm just going to speak my mind. And I don't, I'm not really worried about what people are saying on the internet because these are the same people that are not really, not all of them, but a lot of them are not coming out to support you. A lot of them are underage or too and young, hey. can't, you know, the say that shit to your face. No, nah, girl, the ultimate gag is the people who are commenting on your stuff under those fake pages are the people that are coming out to support you. That's the ultimate gag if you want to be real. Well, they're not but coming to your that's face. What I, that's what I always say for me when I was on Drag Race. If you watch the episodes of me on Drag Race, my friends were like, yeah, girl, that was you. I was never worried about what I said. When it came to me and Jasmine's situation, never apologized about it because that's how I felt in the moment, and that's how you're supposed to feel. Everybody has feelings, and that's just how life is. And when it comes to newer seasons of Drag Race, I guarantee you, if you ask anybody in this room right now who is the most iconic queen they can think of for RuPaul's Drag Race, it might not make it into the double-digit seasons. And that's to be quite honest. Let's be real. The first thing y'all say, oh, we love a Trixie. We love a Alyssa Edwards. Oh, my God, we love a Bob. Your mind goes to that because subliminally you full-on know those what was given. Those moments. are the ones that stuck with you. Not saying that the queens are not memorable because you know, I was on the season two, and I would like to think I was memorable too. But at the same time, those old seasons of Drag Race had some of the most staple kinds of drag, and those are the y'all motherfuckers and them single digits of drag race were shady as hell. <coughs> y'all read people down for fun, and that's the kind of drag that I miss. Everybody in this room talk shit, because I do it too. We all do it, and that's what drag queens talk more shit than any goddamn about it, if we're going to be quite honest. But that's so, what keep us alive. And, mm, that's probably what's I mean, what's, what's life me. without laughter? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, what's life without a read, girl? And if if that's what's keeping that's us what, alive, that's I'm what drag forever. was based off of, yeah. especially in New York. Come on, you know, a read was not a read, bitch. <laughs> right. But all I just want to say, keep dragging people. You know, drag the fuck out of motherfuckers, no matter what people say to you. <laughs> Live your life. Just keep dragging. Please drag me on Twitter. That's my favorite. I will go back and forth. I'm gonna tell you now. I got time. I got I all the time. Listen. In the world. I don't, listen. Everyone I have fought that fight, I and love I'm it. good, bitch. One I got thing, good fans, bitch. One thing I do, I can tell you, about, I will go back and forth with you on Twitter all goddamn day. I don't give a fuck, but I find you pleasure sure in do. it. It turns me on, bitch. I be like, ooh, you insulted me. I'm a little bit wet, so let's mop up the floor. <laughs> like, I like it. I enjoy it. I love that. She all right, we're going to take this opportunity to do a Q&A with our audience, uh, with our lovely, lovely guests. So let's go ahead and start this Q&A. Do we have any questions in the audience? We're going to come on down and get these. All right. Are we having a good time? Yes? Yeah. Woo! Gorgeous. 
Jeff you look Bush. like all right, I'm gonna start right, is hurting. I'm going to start right over here. What's your name? Where are you from? And your question. Also, let's keep the questions like fun and lighthearted and that kind of thing. Let's Sing not get too serious. Ask what they want, bitch. <laughs> let's not get too serious. Ask what you want, baby, okay? Hi, I'm Kyle. I'm from Chicago. Kyle from Chicago. Hey, the question's from Malaysia. Hi, so, Malaysia, you're really well known for your entrance look and the beautiful nightmare. What was your favorite look you got to show? And were there any looks you didn't get to display that you were really wanting to? Thanks for asking me. So my fa- <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, she can't break. talk about stuff that hasn't been shown, but... Um, is this something I was excited? I mean, yeah. But, um, I mean, obviously my entrance look, because I knew it was going to um, make a statement. So I was very excited. Actually, I wanted to wear something else, but then, like, also, I had, because I had worn my entrance look before, and my friends had to convince me to um, wear it. It was like, you know, um, people have seen it, but the world didn't see it, so um, that was one of my most exciting things that I wore. Um, my Beautiful Nightmare was very, very controversial um, because people thought it was way more beautiful than Nightmare, but also, um, when we got... When we got the memo, it didn't say 50% beautiful, 50% nightmare. And I also knew that majority of everybody would go more spooky than beautiful. And it was my interpretation. And I will tell you this. I don't really care what anybody says about my beautiful nightmare look because me and my designer argue down. (laughs) No, I, I will argue with anybody because at the end of the day, if I don't do my drag my way, then I don't feel comfortable. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm open to ideas and concepts, but um, if it's not what I want, then I won't do it. So I, I, I like to be the topic of conversation, even if people felt like it was just a beautiful gown. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, we got a question right here. Hi, my name is Angel. Uh, I live in Chicago, but I'm born and raised Miami, so I wanted to give you your flowers. You made Miami so fucking proud this season. We love you so much. Uh, My question was for Kennedy, though. Uh, Sorry, sorry. I hate love. The girls love a setup. (laughs) Bitch! You don't gotta set these girls up. Just tell them. Be real with them. Three or five. I just wanted to give you your flowers first, but uh, Kennedy, so Thank two you. weeks ago we had the lip sync Lala Perusa, and you are hands down one of, if not the best performer the. we've had on the, the. show. The. So I wanted T-H-E-E-E. to know. <laughs> I wanted to know if anyone specifically impressed you, or if there was anything that you saw as like a highlight from that episode, any performance specifically. <laughs> Cornbread. <laughs> My kid. <laughs> Bitch. Um, I would say <laughs> knees. Yeah, okay. Oh my goodness. I would have to say Anitra. Yeah. Yeah. Um Don't tell simply, Naja. Simply because I've seen her perform in uh Vegas and she was and I was an instant fan because I'm surprised she's not in platforms because she performs in platforms like flips and all yes. kind of shit and she turns the fucking party so I'm an instant fan of Anitra um, the, that lip sync all together was sickening to me which one she did three no I'm saying oh well her and Sasha okay, yeah. Yeah. my favorite one and Sasha don't check your yeah. twitter cause Aja about to at you tonight <laughs> who? Aja she about to at you she don't know who that is <laughs> Damn. Daddy, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. I have a yeah, question over trip. here. Uh, my name's Robert from Denver. Hi, Robert. Oh, Robert from Denver. My question's for uh, Kennedy and Cornbread. Kennedy, when are we going to see you on a versus the world or uh, oh, that's definitely global for all-star Kennedy. season? That ain't for me. That's for Kennedy. Um, true story. <laughs> they called me for Canada versus the world. But I was in the UK. <laughs> I was in the UK. So y'all have to understand, it's not something that we choose to do. They choose us. So I don't know. You know, it just, you know, being, you know, being a good girl, they may call you. You know, <laughs> stay out of OnlyFans. But, um, you, you know, that you just never know. If they call you, I'll go. Which I'm not going to turn anything down. That's an opportunity to be back on television, and it's a check. So, and it, it, you know, and it's an opportunity to gain new friend, new fans, new friends, and you know, 
visit some worlds that you've never seen or performed at before. All right, we got a question right here. Hi, um, I'm actually visiting from South Florida. Uh, so, hi, Malaysia. Uh, my hi. question's for cornbread. <gasps> <laughs> Malaysia Th cornbread, same person. Yeah yeah, 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 you got it. We the same. Now, what's up? Um, cornbread, would you ever consider doing All Stars? Consider doing All Stars? Um, I want to be the first uh, trans um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. That's the first step. <laughs> Y'all joking, but I really, I want to be on one of them housewife shows or basketball wives. I genuinely, because like, they, they like when people miss it. Cause but you got to get a man. I'm going to say you got to get Are a you husband. Currently First looking? off, what's going on? I got a man and his name is Jack. Uh, Daniels, uh, Jack Daniels. No, Jack the <laughs> app. And I drink tequila, mother, no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I, would, I do want to go back to drag race one of these days, but I did want to focus on my transition and focus on my health. That was my biggest thing. You got to make sure you're good all in your head before you go back to something like that. Because I heard and you said no. Who, me? I, I ain't repeating that. <laughs> but no, yeah, um, one day I, I would like to go back, but as of now, not tomorrow. <laughs> I want to touch I'm base on this. Real, I want to touch base on this real quick. I don't know if you guys know, but there are um, the Queerty Awards um, that happen in LA. They happened this week, and Cornbread um, took home uh, her, their first Queerty Award. So congratulations! For future All Stars. That's the game. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And in your, your accept, acceptance speech, you spoke about being on Drag Race for a minute, and that bitch, you're not doing All Stars. If she goes back, she's going to do... You know, I didn't lose. Right. You know, oh, I did lose, but I mean, I didn't get eliminated right. so, by somebody else. It was my own fat-ass ankle, so... Do you think they would bring you to All Stars, or they would bring you back to a regular season? I mean, the regular season has passed. They already had me on season 15, so I'm assuming All-Star is my only future from here on now or versus the world. They just, they just eliminated me tonight. <laughs> to Here Selena, what you mean? So, yeah, I'm pretty sure All-Star is probably in the cars or versus the world. Okay, I have one right over here. Hi, I'm Angel. I'm from Arlington, Texas. Uh, and my question is for everybody on the panel. Hey, Kennedy. Um, so I'm writing a play right now called BBC. It's about the um, black experience, um, <coughs> and black queer experience in um, predominantly white queer spaces. And I just want to know what you guys think that we could all do um, as a queer community to become more united slash things that we can maybe improve on and work on. That's a tough one. I think the first thing is acceptance and love. Yeah. First and foremost, we have like just accepting that people are different and that you know love conquers all. And like I think that's the first thing when you're walking into the real world, like you know you're gonna face a lot of challenges and whatnot. But love, there's there's a lot. It's universal. And uh, it, that goes along with understanding that there's nobody better than the next person. And I think, obviously, you know, show your respects to people who are, you know, putting themselves on TV and all that light like that. But there's also a thing of we're all human. You're no different than I am. I'm no better than you are. And I think that's where it starts at. Will it get there? Probably not, because, you know, in this queer community, we some shallow motherfuckers. But in a perfect world, yes, everybody will look at themselves as equals. And if you don't, then let the motherfuckers know, bitch, you know, we on the same playing field. Don't let nobody, like, demean you in any way. So, yeah, definitely equality for all. Um, I, I would say see no color. You know, don't see a color, see a person. And treat everybody like you want to be treated. Um, that's just to piggyback on what you said and what you, uh, and what you said. Just don't see color because regardless of who you are, where you came from, a lot of us are programmed and don't even know it. And a lot of our actions don't be intentional and we don't know it, you know? So we, we do things and it don't be intentional. But if you start paying more attention to how you treat someone, then you start treating others better. Black stock is a white shoes belong in the church. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think one of the most important things is, uh, uh, what's that saying? How does it go, do, do as you say? Like, I, I think within our own community, we're so quick to say, we need to be inclusive, but have you ever been to a Latino bar or vice versa? 
Do you get what I'm saying? We always say, let's be inclusive, but are you inclusive? Yeah. Are they doing the work? Like, yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah. yeah because it's, it, it's always so funny to say, um, you know, when we, we talk about body positivity, we talk about, you know, twinks and, and muscle guys and how, oh, these people need to be accepted and we don't. Do you get what I'm saying? It's within the community, I feel like, that we can expect others to do something that we're not doing ourselves. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, and I think that starts with us, yeah? Yeah. Um, okay, do we have any more questions? Yeah, we do. Work. I have one right here. And it better be messy. Um, sorry. Uh, Kate from Chicago. This question's for Malaysia. Kate. Um, I loved watching you on the show, and it was great to have you as like the narrator. But I'm wondering, with this abbreviated season and the edit, if there's any confessionals or storyline that you would have liked to have seen for yourself included on the show that wasn't, or if there were any storylines in general that you were kind of surprised got left out. Um, yeah. Abbreviated season is the best thing I have ever. That was heard. so heard. politically heard. polite and correct. Coined that was that really good. This season was very abbreviated. <laughs> I mean, of course, um, the purpose of the show is to get to the, the core of what they need and the storyline of what they need. Um, I mean, some of the relationships that you don't see developed on the camera is obviously um, me and Spice's relationship, um, me and Anitra's relationship. Me and Anitra are like best friends off the show. And then I think you can kind of see it in, well... I thought we would see it this last episode, but yeah, it wasn't in there. Um, <laughs> but me and Anitra's relationship, um, we didn't get to see. Um, I mean, I think I'm the queen of the confessionals, so I, I pretty much just always said what was on my mind. And I always, the confessionals was so fun for me. And I had two story producers um, um, while I was there, and they both told me they weren't supposed to tell me, but they said I was their favorite person to um, story produce because I was very funny, very fun. And on my last day, everybody came in the room and told me how funny and um, how they enjoyed my confessionals. And that made me feel really good because obviously they don't tell you that throughout the competitions because they don't want to show any biasness. But um, on the last day, it felt really, really good and it made me feel like my experience was worth it in the end. Yeah. This bitch said, they told me not to tell nobody. She just told the whole Roscoe's audience on YouTube. The whole Now, world. you know damn well everybody watches this goddamn messy they ass do, show. Oh my bitch. God. They're they told me not to tell right nobody, now. but we about to tell every messy motherfucker on the internet. And I live. That was cornbread that was there that said that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a question here. Daniel from Los Angeles. Um, we talk a lot about what happens on the show, but there's this whole process of y'all getting to the show. What was one of like a memorable time of you preparing to get on the show that like really stood out to you? Being stressed out, getting ready for the show. <laughs> um, probably the amount of time. Um, that um, you have to get prepared for the show. Is it still a month uh, or is it longer? I don't know. Um, I don't want to <laughs> say. <laughs> but I, I, I just want the audience and like people, uh, fans and supporters of the show. It's something that I would change if I could go back and do it all over again. But also, I just want y'all to give grace to people because when I was getting prepared for the show, literally everybody that I worked with, it was prom season. So everybody was like booked. So that's why I had beautiful gowns, ma majority of the time. Um, and also for me, being plus size, right before, when I got casted for the show, I changed my, um, my pads, my body. So I had to find stockings that fit me, and I had to go on Amazon. And I don't know if y'all recall, going back to the Lala Perusa was the first time I kind of really showed my legs on stage, and my stockings was orange as fuck. <laughs> And I was like, I was cringing watching that episode. I was like, oh, my gosh, it's so disgusting. Because, and RuPaul actually comp complimented and said she loved my stockings. And I cringed even more. Uh -uh. <laughs> she was like, where do you get your stockings from? They're the perfect tone. I'm like, bitch, is my face orange? Look how fucking orange you Because my look. legs is orange, tangerine, bitch. So cool. <laughs> but, um... Everything that I kind of like was getting made for my new body, I kind of didn't want to show my stockings because my stockings wasn't the right color. So that's why I kind of went with the same silhouette. So when people were saying, I'm like, I'm not explaining this to the people, but I'm saying it now. So people know, like, I kind of like st tried to keep away from showing my legs. And then this was the second time I kind of showed my legs 
was the Beyonce look. And they, they, they didn't look too orange this time. Bitch. Uh, they look good. My, yeah. my favorite preparation thing, I had a meeting at my house with all of my fat black friends. And I was like, listen, I'm about to tell y'all something. I need you to message this designer. You going to message this designer. Because I ain't want nobody to know that I was going. Because some of these designers be snitching. Except this one. I like him. They didn't say anything. Hi. They made one of my dresses. But yes, I had a bunch of fat black people in my house. And I said, y'all about to message these people and say, hey, I got on this little show. And I'm about to go somewhere. So they didn't know it was me. So I think that was my favorite thing for sure. It's just having people lie for me. People wasn't responding to uh, me. I didn't enjoy none of it. Damn. It was very stressful, and by the Got time up. I finished, I was very discouraged, and I'm just being honest. Yeah. Like, season seven, because I didn't have a lot of drag, and I didn't have a lot of resources back then, and I took what I had, and I actually did the tape. The, the first part of my tape was 20... Wait, hold on. My audition tape was like an hour and something. What? Yes. So you the reason and they then, say wait 20 minutes. No, 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 no. I didn't know that, well, I'll say this. The it's, the it's a certain part of the audition that has to be a certain amount of time. And my whole audition, <laughs> it was a mess. I, <laughs> so, Long story short, I had to take, I was going to Miss Black America at, and as well as trying to film, so I had to go to Atlanta. So I went to Atlanta to do the, the that particular section all over again. And so by that time, it was just draining and I don't feel like I presented my best. So I just really feel like it was God just making it my destiny, you know, and it was my purpose to be on RuPaul's Drag Race because I just wasn't confident in what I presented at all because I didn't have much and everything that I had on pretty much for season seven was borrowed. Yeah. <laughs> I would say for f for future contestants too, also like, cause we go in with the mentality that we want to be brand new and you know, especially like the fans have an expectation that they want to see our drag on this like major level. We broke as fuck before we go there. And we don't, st like a lot of people, not me, because I don't owe anybody anything. So a lot of people go in and they go in in debt and they have to come back home and they have to work hard to pay all that back because they are trying to give the fans what they want or the level of drag that the fans expect of them. But this is our first go round at Drag Race. So I feel like the fans should give the people a little bit more grace. But if I go back to, if I was to, if I could rewind and go back, the biggest thing that I would tell myself is to go out of my closet and elevate everything out of my closet and well, that's what uh, present I did for, it because that's what I did the world, the stars. world don't see it. The world, didn't see it. Like people in your hometown <laughs> see it. People you've done pageants with. But the see world it. has it. But the world has it. That's what it. I did for All Stars. Like I did get some things made, but by the time they called me for All Stars, I invested my drag. I don't know, you know, a lot of the girls do not. But I'm one of the girls that really invest in my drag and I get the things that I've all that I wasn't always able to get. Like gowns and you know, fits and looks and hair. I didn't have that luxury. Drag was survival for me. So as long as I had me a few dance costumes and a gown here and there, I was fine. I was doing drag to survive. But then when the opportunity came for me and the monetary means came for me to put back into my passion, I did just that. So when All Stars came around, I was ready. And I just added to what I already had. You know. I just hearing you guys, I, I, I'm starting to, like, I'm thinking of something really quick. Is there any, and this goes back to, like, all the love that I think you guys should show all the girls, but is there anyone in this audience that could name a competition or a show that is on TV that requires, pretty much, uh, any contestant to spend money, a lot of money, to compete? And I'll wait. Is there anyone that could name a competition on TV? When you watch Hell, the, the Hell's Kitchen and all these... They don't bring their ingredients from home. They don't bring a stove with them. This is all, everything is fucking supplied, right? Doesn't happen for Malaysia. They didn't say, Malaysia, here's $35,000 and go get yourself a whole new wardrobe. They didn't do that. For what? 
Does anyone? Can anyone think? Uh, Big like Brother. Even, even, not, even for the even for the audition process, yes. they want to see eight to sixteen looks. And yes. um, try out six times like me. You cannot repeat a look from the past. Season. Yeah, they yeah. say from the that. first yep. time you audition, you oh, cannot wow. repeat it. So yeah, Kennedy, uh, you spoke about the audi your audition tape being over an hour. What is the the what are they looking for? What is the gap? I mean, then I think the the whole audition tape had to be like thirteen minutes. Yeah, and all of the like. Was it for you to? Mine you was, was closer yeah, to my season. Mine was fourteen minutes. Yeah, yeah. So and and really, it was twelve. And I had emailed them, and I was like, um, <laughs> can I? Is it okay if it's thirteen minutes? They said, yeah, it's okay. But it, it, twelve minutes—that's what it was. The whole audition had to be twelve minutes, and my interview was twenty-one minutes. <laughs> So I had a lot of fixing to it, do. It was so many times, like, I had, I had somebody edit my video, and I'm like, take the breaths out. Take all the breaths out, because, bitch, I was talking forever. Yes. I was like, yeah, that, 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 that. Like, take the breaths out. I always tell people, if you audition for a drag race, it's literally the audition process, because this is public information. It's literally just an episode of Drag Race. You're in the confessionals, you're saying, hey, my name is X, Y, and Z. They didn't want to see your lip sync style. They didn't want to see your impersonation, your snatch game. It's literally a full-on episode of RuPaul's Drag Race. Why do you think you're the winner? I'm the winner because X, Y, and Z. So I always tell people to go in with the mentality of, what would you look like? Go watch an episode of Drag Race of somebody that had a, a full episode of themselves and just give that. Because I could talk all goddamn day, but I was like, you know what? Nope. Follow the margin of what they give. Because we got 20 minutes now. If it goes over 20 minutes, they ain't watching. That's basically how the ruling goes. So it's just an episode of Drag Race, honestly. Well, this season for sure. Abbreviated. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they want to see you in and out of drag, which is like the, your interview portion. It's you actually in and out. Yes, it's out of drag. Yeah. And they God want you to do that completely listen. out. They want your Snatch game character on there, and they even give you the lines. They give you some lines, uh, at, like what would RuPaul what would, would, would say, say? Okay. and then you would kind of react to that, you know, based on your, I mean, yeah. as your Snatch game character. I mean, it's a full outline it's, it's that outline, you have to yeah. follow. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, we have a question here. Hi, uh, I'm Jade from Chicago. Hi, Jade. Uh, Jade I have from a Chicago. stupid little question for Malaysia. Go for um, it. I just wanted to know how it feels to be the inventor of the color green because you look gorgeous. Wow. And Thank also, Nasha, I think, also invented the color pink oh, because she God. is also stunnosha. Uh, love you all, though. Thank you. Thank you. I just so want to piss Mich Michelle Visage off. <laughs> <laughs> I think it worked, child, because you oh, sit up here on the episode, you're done. <laughs> you pissed them off enough. I, let me do this one really quick, and then we'll wrap up with that one, For I sure. think. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Baby oh. said, give me the mic. <laughs> Ruba from Chicago. Uh, my question is, while you're on the runway, can you hear the comments? All yes. of them. Yes. Can I ask another question? OK, real quick. Uh, how long does it take you guys to do full drag? Or sorry, full glam? Like at drag race or in real life? In real life. Um, it just depends on, you know, if it's for trade or if it's for this. Um, <laughs> you know, if it's for trade, it's just a wig and a lash. Um, so my full drag. <laughs> That's full drag, <laughs> That's baby. That's full drag for me, baby. I'm going to exactly. tell you, y'all get Demoria for about 12 more months, honey. This is all y'all. Hello, I came here to just to look sexy and leave looking sexy as well. No, um, I would give it a good hour, and 30 minutes of yeah. that goes to eating. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. I say an hour for me to get a full drag, yeah. How much is that? Is eating? Um, nine. Okay. No. Boring. I'm Kennedy, starving. start to finish. How long does it take? I can't believe really, y'all said an hour. Like, you mean like to paint or to get fully in drag? Fully, fully all together. Oh, fully face in. Body. Yeah, because I'm like, no, because I get in drag fast, and I know. I mean, an hour and a half then. Yeah. yeah. It takes a lot of time to look About, soft. Yeah. Jasmine Kennedy is the fastest one I've ever seen get in drag. Have you guys witnessed Jasmine well, Kennedy? Well, Jasmine don't wear no makeup. Yeah, yeah. Jasmine put on <laughs> no. cha chapstick You know who do they make up so fast? Irene. Irene did and her makeup in the workroom so that one day she was there for 15 and 15 minutes. That's <laughs> she what did it so fast, she left. She was there. Yeah. 15 even, minutes? That's the whole pro episode. Promo and press week too, I promise you. 15 minutes, like seriously. All right, we have one more question over here, then we're going to jump into Untucked. 
Hi, my name is Michael, and my uh, question is for Malaysia. So referencing back to like the Lala Perusa, mm -hmm. uh, one of the most iconic moments was you and Spice's lip sync. Um, was there any strategy picking Spice, and did you know that she was going to forget her words? Um, yeah, it actually was a strategy. <laughs> okay, going into the Lala Perusa, I told, well, the word around the room, we, did, we knew that Spice was not like the strongest lip syncer in the room. Um, so I said that I wouldn't choose Spice because, first of all, I consider her my daughter. And um, I was just like, I just didn't want to lip sync against her. And even like in episodes, because I'm getting attacked online too about this too, and I'm going to straighten it right now. Mistress was the one in the confessional saying that Marsha, Lucy, and Spice were targets. I praised Marsha for her amazing talent in the talent show. I didn't think that Marsha was a weak lip syncer. The reason, um, and also they expected me to choose Mistress or Spice. I was going to choose Mistress, I would say that. But my strategy was, if I wanted to stay longer in the competition, they would keep me around if they really wanted to lip sync. And we'll see, Untuck, um, we'll see. Work. Ooh, okay. I would have, I would have chose Sasha or Anisha but, um, just for the fuck of it. Oh, That's the kind of shit I like. I, I was like, I didn't, I didn't, answer, the, I didn't answer the question. Um, after I didn't win the lip sync against Marsha, um, which was fine with me, I kept a smile on my face because I know the cameras be panning back there too, bitch. But we went on a lunch break, and Spice said, if um, if my name get chosen, I would rather my mama send me home. So she said she would choose me, and I was like, girl, I don't want to choose you. And she said. Please choose me. So that's why I chose Spice the second go around. But Spice tried to pull one. She bitch. tried to set you the fuck up and then said, she I didn't know the words either. But the gag was all the girls was like really like vibing with Don't Go Yet. And I literally, you get one day to learn eight, nine songs. Um, and that was just like the one song that I just was not like trying to learn. I, I, and y'all wouldn't have known I didn't know the words until they put those confessionals in there. Only when I did like this. <laughs> but I knew the I knew I knew the chorus. I knew all the ad libs to the song. I knew the second verse. I just didn't know the second part of the first verse. So let's keep it real. Did that mean you ain't know the words? Just that, that part. That still ain't knowing the motherfucking <laughs> word. You should do like I actually was very sad when I won that lip sync because I was like, Spice beat my ass, bitch. Nah, we saw it. Spice, <laughs> Spice ain't new shit. Spice is like, yeah. Woo, I'm like, yeah, Spice don't know nothing, and I'm obsessed and, and with it. No, you look at me on the stage. I was like this when RuPaul was like, Malaysia, trying to tell you, say, I was like, Damn. That's because they, they took long to deliberate because they was writing down, okay, she got five <laughs> words, and she got seven words, so ah! by the penalty, she won it. <laughs> That's and they I said, said, this bitch did a conga line. Yeah, yeah, they did tally marks, bitch, because I ain't knew but 14 <laughs> words together at that point. Well, speaking of lip syncs, Malaysia, here we just, some of us disagreed that Spice lost the lip sync last week. From your perspective, behind the stage, Selena versus Spice, who won out of that? Selena versus Spice? Um, I don't remember the lip sync. Like, it's, it was, I'm not even trying to be shady. The song was It bad. wasn't, like, memorable. Um... So I don't, I don't know. We just, we just kind of just thought Selena had won because Spice was the weaker lip sync, regardless. So we really, we didn't, we seen it with everybody else when we seen it from the front, and we see like the edited, chopped up version. So yeah. If you see I it mean. from the front, wait till you see it from the back. Bam, 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 bam. I also oh, think shit. some of the girls get like mixed up where they're like, if they lose at a lip sync, it means they're like bad lip syncers. No. Yeah, that's not uh, the case. That, that's that, sometimes. And this, I mean, no, yeah. <laughs> But like also like um I mean like that wasn't like in the La La Perusa was not my best showing of me as a lip singer or a performer. But also those aren't songs that I would do if I was like in the real world performing. Those right. I, I never had the choice of being chosen or choosing a song that is in my wheelhouse or something that I'm strong at doing. So I just did the best of my ability. I don't I don't claim to be a dancer, a kicker. That's why I made fun of myself. Oh bitch, let's get this leg up. I've been meaning to talk to you about that because I thought that leg was about to go to your motherfucking ear. Okay, you said, to be real, I wanted okay. to talk. I was gagged, catch me girl. at the show tonight. The leg is higher than I'm that okay. now. Okay, <laughs> two inches higher. And I'm coming to, and them two inches matter. It don't too, matter. Two inches, inch, every inch matters. Okay. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Shit. I'm the lip sync assassin of the season. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, the lip syncs assassinated. Look, <laughs> they was attacking me online because I put a post up saying like <laughs> some of your favorite girls can't lip sync. <laughs> it was like cool. I, I had to turn my it. notifications Damn, off. Damn, you so messy. <laughs> 
Well, I think we we all agreed. We thought that uh, Spice did win that lip sync. Yeah. Oh, I don't agree with that. But that's I thought I thought lip sync. I, I thought she. Well, I honestly thought against she me. Did win that. Uh, Lucy. No, 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 no. With um, oh, uh, Selena. With Selena. Selena. Oh, last week. Oh, yeah. Oh, see, shit. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, shit. I'm going. I'm going too far. I thought Spice actually won that really? lip sync. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it was way more entertaining. The 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 drama that Selena was giving was not serving. Yeah, the drama I didn't realize that, that she was being so serious with the lip sync. Yeah, she was so serious. Yeah. Yeah. She was performing wow. in like a ballad. <laughs> I lived. She was, we no. went to, because we went to theater school together. So I really enjoyed the moments. Because I'm like, oh, she see that man right above their head. So I liked I it. Every last one of you. And Spice ain't know the words either. I hate all of y'all. I wonder if Lucy agrees with that. She Lucy just, looks so cute and safe right there. That's <laughs> insane. Did anyone notice someone with a wonky lash? Mistress. Yes. Oh, I was telling you know Maddie, what's so funny? We, we were talking it's about it. it. It's it's ironic that RuPaul said, you look Best. the most beautiful you've ever looked, and today she has a wonky lash. She, I'm telling you, that woman is condescending. She tells you, she, you look amazing when there's one thing wrong. Um, her, we were talking about her makeup. Her makeup is usually snatched up and really pulled, and it's really low and sunken in this time, so just she just didn't have her wing. But she still looks gorgeous, but girl, really? All that? <laughs> I can't comment on makeup, because season 14, bitch, I just look like I was wearing lotion. <laughs> Good you quality. Uh, good gold quality. Bond. Good quality. Not gold bond, bitch. Cocoa <laughs> butter. Cocoa butter. The, the, the one that don't rub in that your grandma had in the bottom of the bathroom cabinet. Okay. So when you're on Drag Race, obviously um, there's, there's two kind of people that are on Drag Race. It's like you have a horrible experience and then you're just jaded. Or you take this opportunity to grow and, and learn from your experience. What um, what have you ladies learned from being on RuPaul's Drag Race? Mm, I mean, I, well, for one, I think I've learned a lot about myself. Um, for one, which is the craziest part, um, RuPaul was the one who looked at me when we were on stage and this didn't end up making the episodes or whatever, but RuPaul was the one who told me, there's something that's going on with you like eternally, and I don't want to put a label on anything. She says, but you need to like sit down with yourself and figure some stuff out. And that gagged the fuck out of me. That's why I was boohooing before that J-Lo episode. It wasn't my anchor, it was RuPaul. So I think I learned a lot about myself in as far as like me transitioning and things, and then what I liked. And I also realized when I was on Drag Race, I was in a spot of freshly transitioning so my drag and my transition were meshing into one I didn't want to look like a man in a wig kind of moment as well as me being you know a trans woman but I had to find the difference in this is who I am and this is what I do so I think me going to drag race definitely kind of screwed me up in the the head mentally of like wait what the fuck am I what am I doing how am I doing this so when RuPaul was like okay girl you need to reach inside yourself and figure some shit out and cause no one knew that I was transitioning before I went to drag race I didn't talk about it the only person knew was Carrie so when she said that I was like boo hoo 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 because I was like who the fuck am I so I learned who I was from drag race and um also, I learned from Jasmine Masters um, in her voice, bitch, put some more goddamn blush on your motherfucking face. That's what Jasmine <laughs> said to me every show we did in L.A. If you don't put no more blush on you, bitch, I'm going to beat your ass. So I started wearing more blush. <laughs> Thanks, Jasmine. <laughs> um, for me, um, my experience, I feel like I learned to not really like kind of second guess myself um, after Drag Race. Because um, mm -hmm. my mentality going in, of course, like, like I said, I've auditioned like six, seven times. So of course, like that plays a role in your head. Like, I don't want to go home early. And then you think about, I don't want to let everybody down. And I'm the first queen from Miami. And you play, you have all those things like playing in your head. Also while you're trying to compete. Also while you're supposed to be given TV at the same time. So I feel like if I was to go back or um, could do the experience over, I would kind of just let my guard down and not focus on those things and at least like try to have a lot more fun. I mean, I had fun, but a lot more fun than I did and not so late in the competition versus like right off the bat. And honestly, that was one of the things that I really respected about the twins a lot. I don't know about the judges bowing to a contestant. That might show a little bias. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Well, that. I mean, I think it was just a moment because it's not like she don't know the girls. True. You know, I think it was just a moment where, you know, Drag Race is unfolding and allowing uh, 
excuse me, um, other other people in our community to compete. So I just think it was just an acknowledgement, like Karen and, Kobe. And, and yeah, and Tia. Give my bitch a ten. And C.S. Madison is a huge fan of pageantry. She loves Continental and all that good stuff. So she knows she Sasha. Know everything she, about she everybody. Knows, oh, yeah. She, she knows, knows the gig, you know. But I know, so. I'm just saying, like, in that room with all those other girls she sitting there sing. listening, like, <laughs> sh- they're like, oh, well, fuck my drag, you know? Right. That's that's where I was going with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that should have been a confessional moment. Like, girl, let me just tell you. <laughs> was this your first time meeting um, T.S.? Me. Yeah, yeah. You looking around, bitch. We never <laughs> see you on the show, <laughs> bitch. You no. really thought you was cornbread for a second. My <laughs> no, <man>. we, <laughs> bitch, we met T.S. Uh, Madison uh, on the screen. Uh, right. Uh, no, no right. she's originally sister. she's originally really from Miami. Um, so she's always like Kennedy say like at the pageant. She's like that girl like that's just always there. So like that's not my first time being in contact with her or being around her or um, interacting with her. Like yeah. Selena with Frankie. Yeah. Yeah, or I mean, they didn't get to interact though. Oh, why no? That's why they didn't get the interview. But that ain't my business. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I didn't Wait, get Selena's that. Wait, Selena's friends so Selena, with Frankie? Yeah, she yeah, said it, that earlier in the they, season. They're, they're all best, over the they're internet. They're best friends. They're literally like best friends. Like have been best friends for a while. Um, Selena knows uh, Ariana and Frankie like very very well. Um, which I'm pretty sure that's why she didn't get assigned to Frankie for the interview portion because it would have been too easy. Oh, one thing about the interview thing too. Like we had like um to study the people that we were interviewing and a lot of things um, about them, yeah. And my interview thing, it said that Frankie was vegan and then right before we went on set, they said, oh, he's not vegan, so we're gonna put sausages in it, okay? Oh, what? so we're gonna fuck you up like we're that. We're gonna add meat to y'all segment. I said, oh, okay. That eliminated some of the questions off the list because my segment was about food and being vegan and stuff. Okay, and now sauce. I think it was interesting that they showed Lux's family video. I would have turned that shit oh, around. Sorry. We finna get back to it and see. Oh, okay, I was saying before we got back to that, I found it interesting that they showed Lux's family video when traditionally they show either someone who's gonna win or lose. Um, Malaysia, were any of y'all expecting a family video? Because you and Mistress both seemed like y'all were checked out but also ready to put on a good show. I really, really thought I was gonna get a family video. <laughs> When that popped up on the screen, I was like, oh, this is random. <laughs> so did, did that also make you think Lux was also going to win seeing that? No. Um, because at that point, I think we had thought... <laughs> it was a lot. But um, we had seen... We've seen the challenge before um, now. And our predictions as a cast, we thought that Selena and Lucy um, were the ones for the win. And we thought that me, Mistress, and Sasha was the bottom three for the challenge. That was what we thought as a whole. Um, but we all were gagged when we got on the stage, and um, it was different. Yeah, no, I was going to say, that's what's interesting, because it only seemed like you and Mistress were talking about being the bottom. They didn't mention well, anything yeah. about Selena. Also, yeah. they, <laughs> gosh, I might get in trouble, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that shot's doing what it's supposed um, to. You, no, no. It's just me being me. <laughs> Mistress, um, as you heard, she said that she was in a gown and it would be hard for her to lip sync. But also Mistress had a whole fit that was edited out. Um, and she said, I'm going to stand there in one spot and you better dance circles around me, bitch. And I said, that's why I was saying, like, girl, no, let's just get them a show or whatever like that. Um... I think somebody caught wind of it and they said, oop, we got to, you know, we like her. (laughs) Let's put Selena down there, baby. But yeah. Um, And also, I just knew that they, like I said, like from the La La Perusa, that's why I didn't choose Mistress because it's a storyline at the end of the day. The two friends that fell out and became back friends again, they y'all, everybody wanted to see the lip sync between the two big girls at the end of the day. It would have been iconic. And why not have one friend send the other friend home at the end of the day? But it didn't happen. I mean, they had twins send each other home. So, right. I mean, why, why not friends, right? Right. You didn't do what they wanted you to do. They sent you home. And we're back. Give it up for Malaysia. Baby doll, baby doll. Come on, Malaysia. From the 305. (laughs) Thank y'all so much for supporting me this season. Oh, you better stop. (laughs) 
You better start. Listen, uh, Malaysia, we, we, it was a beautiful message. Uh, encouraging people to be themselves. Uh, is there anything that you want to tell, anything else that you want to express or tell your fans? Um, you have this beautiful platform here that you're able to say whatever you'd like to say. I'll, I'll just speak. <laughs> um, even when you are put in predicaments that you don't necessarily agree with, don't let those um, predicaments defeat you. Just always show um, the positive side of yourself because at the end of the day, you want, that's what you want to reflect and people to see um, about you. And I did not want to go out of the competition defeated whatsoever, despite um, the circumstances. And at the end of the day, I enjoyed myself and I wanted to show the world who I was. I felt like I showed a part of me, but now is the time for people to continue to follow me and see every part of me because there's so much more to Malaysia Baby Doll Fox. And I thank y'all for loving me and supporting me week after week. Whether y'all love my beautiful gowns and my same silhouette, I still love y'all. <laughs> well, Malaysia, it was an absolute pleasure to see you on screen. It was, an, it, it was a true gift. Thank you so much uh, for auditioning and never giving up. You made it. We cannot wait to see what the, huge, the future holds for you. We're super excited for you. Thank yes, you. Yes, this is the beginning. Yes. And then uh, really quick before we wrap this up, I did want to say, I don't want to get too political, but I do want to get into it just a little bit. We have to make sure that we are completely aware of who we're voting for. Our profession is under attack in this country right now, and we have to make sure that we protect the artistry of drag. Now, this is a little controversial, but I do have to say it. I have to reach out to all of my drag artists, brothers, sisters, uh, everyone in between, we have to be very conscious of what we are putting out there. If we are going to be performing where children are visible, we should not be talking about wet ass pussy. We need to be very conscious of what it is that we're doing because we do not need to give anybody the ammo to attack this profession, this art that we love to do so much. So please, if we have to cover up, if we have to censor the certain things that we're doing because we know that there's children in the audience, Please, as entertainers, please go ahead and do so. We need to protect what we do, uh, the art form of drag. So please, yes. please, please be aware of who you're voting for and what you're doing. Remember, and let's do that. it's not a crime, it's a celebration. For Absolutely. Sure, for sure. On that note, please make some noise for our other two gorgeous guests. Make some noise for Kennedy Davenport and Corn Bread! <laughs> Once again, we will be back at 10.30 with performances from all the divas and your host here. And do not forget to stop by next week to see our special guests, Bag of Chips, Juno Birch, and Marsha, 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 Marsha. Ooh, that'll be fun. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Batty Davis. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your bearded bestie, Caramel DeVille. And my name is Nisha Lopez. Thank you guys so much for joining us. YouTube, push that subscribe button. And thank you guys for watching. Bye.